Hello, hi, this is Roger Castillo. Uh, I will be doing the narration on these films on uh, the dating back to the historic archives on how the Guadalupe River functions during a drought. Uh, the drought of 1992 uh, and finding how Chinook salmon utilize storm drains and outfall systems when the river remained dry and we had not recovered out of this drought. In the year of 1992, no storms came in at the end of 1992, so 99% of all Chinook salmon, which you'll see in the archives of 1992, will, will show that all the fish spawned right below and within the vicinities of large storm drains that were sending out water so clean that we even determined that we could find steelhead rainbow trout collecting with salmon within the 1992, 93, and 94 period. This, this culvert system, which is Canoas Creek, the tributary, is a well-known tributary that delivers and flashes any passing storm to the amount that it could provide hundreds of CFS with every little passing storm, which contributes to fish migration within the Lincoln Avenue exchange off the Almaden Expressway, allowing fish to move up from the downtown areas and hold in deep pools within the Kirtner and Willow Glen area, along with Ross Creek contributing flows the numbers are astronomical. After 34 years of monitoring and following the Chinook salmon populations and to explain how the whole river system functions through the 1992 to 2017 and starting to accumulate flow gauge data on how important flash discharge contributes to fish movement and why the Santa Clara Valley Water District conducted the trapping of adult Chinook and never assembled the data on river stream profiling on the effects of storm drains and other tributaries allowing fish movement and while they conducted reds and nesting identification. This next film segment was taken in October of 1993. Investigating unit from Channel 11 News in San Jose, Rob Flottable, to prove that there's existing free flows coming from storm drains. I heard them, that's all. No. You know, here we go. I'm gonna slide them on. Yeah, I'm gonna slide them on back the grass in. for a second. There he is. It's the salmon. And they wouldn't believe you, huh? And they wouldn't believe me. <gasps> in frustration and not getting any help from the Department of Fish and Wildlife, I had an investigating unit, Channel 11 News, come and film me. Capturing and containing the salmon to prove that they existed to get the additional permits to start the tissue gathering on Chinook salmon. As you observe, I am releasing this Chinook. Please observe the flows coming out of this storm drain, which never diminished throughout this entire drought. Observing where I just released this salmon, these flows have been, have been sent to the river system nearly a hundred years. In November 1993, after receiving the Department of Fish and Games permits to apprehend and collect tissue from Chinook salmon, we identified that a large congregation of fish always accumulated below these large storm drain outfalls that have been sending water for a hundred years. Looking at the backdrop where I just laid this fish all of this water is coming from an outfall.
At the same time, in conducting this fishing expedition to apprehend Chinook, it incidentally actually angled a 14 to 12 inch steelhead rainbow trout that you just seen in the footage. Again, looking at the backdrop where I'm holding these fish is not the main river system, but actually the outfall flows coming from this storm drain. Estimates of at least 50 Chinook staged downstream of this outfall all the way to Trimble Road as the October time frame we observed salmon staging in numerous pools and ponds. At the time of ap trying to apprehend fish and having numerous fish on the line, we were only able to land three fish. This hen Chinook was around 30 inches long and was the last fish landed this day. Now after a small storm in November, move fish up to mid middle areas of the Guadalupe River. On the Guadalupe between uh, Lincoln and the old Almaden Road here and we're going to be looking for uh, Chinook salmon this morning. What did you say you forgot Roger? Oh, you're, I thought you said you had to have a fishing license. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> we have a fishing game here this morning with this uh, biologist, and he's going to, we're going to try to catch a fish we've seen down here and kind of document what it is. Got to drive back down there. Got one uh, dead female carcass here. which is uh, getting a measurement on it. How long is it, Rich? About 27 and a half. 27 and a half inches. Or stuff in the bottom there. That's where we've been seeing some of the fish. Hold him up, Roger. That's the salmon. Gonna get some uh, fin clippings here. The female, uh, about 30 inches long. We're taking a look at some of the uh, spawning reds down in here. And the sun came up here. Or maybe I'll get down in there and uh, get some close-up pictures to kind of give you an idea where we're at. You can see the uh, Almaden Expressway. Morning commute going on. We've got a spawning area that runs along here quite a bit. The fish have been working in uh, pretty good gravel. First thing I want to point out is the diminished uh, flows that we have here. In a four-day peri period, you can see that, uh, comparing the two film documentations, that the flows have gone down considerably. The traction flows here are very much dis diminished uh, from what they were on the 22nd. There is a thermometer that's uh, left in this stream here. I don't know who's monitoring the water temperature, uh, but they've put weights on it to keep it underneath the water and probably hidden from view. And periodically people must come by and monitor the stream temperature. So I guess we'll just put it back in its place here. It's 42 degrees here on this date. We got some eggs down in there. We're gonna take it and see if we can't find just a few that may be laying on top. Two uh, hens here. Chinook salmon. Say 28 and a half. 28 and a half. This one over here is going to be in the 30s here, probably. Yeah. Uh, these would probably be 31. 31. Three-year-old fish, three to four, somewhere around there. 
They both spawned out females. Their tails are pretty well beaten up where they've been digging in the gravel. Okay. Uh, both fish have the uh, adipose fin there, so they're not hatchery marked fish. And we're pretty late into the season now, so these fish have been dead for a little while, but they spawned in the uh, Guadalupe here. This is uh, right at, uh, uh, we're in between uh, Foxworthy and, uh, what's the next road down here? Foxworthy and Lincoln? Lincoln, yeah, right at Lincoln Avenue on the Guadalupe. Park is here, this uh, fish here is pretty badly decomposed, it's been I would say dead for a month, at least a month now. There's a pretty nice buck here. Uh, put the tape on him, Roger. Let's see uh, how long he really not is. That old. It's just that. I wonder if he's still alright. It might be. We can take a sample. Put the tape on him there. Well, that was wrong. 36 is 34. 34? Yeah. Okay. Right on the edge? Well, you're a little bit short. 34 and a half or so. It's a little of the creek right here at this location. And we're right at the Guadalupe Creek, and this is the Almaden overpass, and you can see the uh, over ramp. They're going on Lincoln Avenue right over there. That's the exact location. And we've got several carcasses here in this area. A carcass right here pretty bad to decompose. So one of the big uh, buck up above there was uh, we had seen it alive two weeks ago so that's how fast they decompose. Two weeks ago we had that fish alive or we assume it was the same one. If you're coming down the creek bed. Let's hear this. Once again you know it was all it's been pretty old. But that's a nice uh, female there. Nice hen. If you want to hold it up, I'll take a picture of you. Taking the left fin off. Got a female, and I think she's uh, she spawned out. So she's, uh, her tail is pretty bad shape, so she's already done her thing. We, we better get her back in the water there. Yeah. She's gonna go. They're pretty tough. She's nothing but water in there, and she's all spawned out. Why don't you hold her up by the tail so we can see her? The gill might hurt her. I don't want to hurt her gill. But... Yeah. Look, okay. salmon. Okay. Yeah. Look at the eggs coming out, Dale. Dale, the eggs are coming out. Oh, uh, there's probably yeah. just a few there. Yeah. Okay, you better hold her so she, uh, yeah, let her. She's pretty much spawned out though. Yeah, now you hold her head right in the current. She'll come back. Let the oxygen will buy her gills. These fish can hide here right next to the bank there. <laughs> You could walk by if you weren't really looking for them, you'd never know they were here. This is uh, gravel reds here they've been using. As they've been using here, and I, I can see about four eggs laying on top, but they this is where they uh, have been covering them up and so forth. Let me get down here and uh, point out. I can see one of them right Right there where the stick is, is a, is a salmon egg. And there's a couple more here. Let's see if I can find them again. They're laying on top. Normally they, they don't all get buried, of course. I don't want to disturb the nest here. Oh, here's a big one right here that's laying on top. Right there, Dale. Okay. Right there. Right here, too. Right there at the end of the stick now. Oh, there's yeah, yeah, there's a nice egg there, salmon egg. That was kind of white though, it's probably dead. No, white one.